Everyone's watching you now. Totally, I know. I mean, they're watching you right now. Damn it, where is that camera? So at the end of season one, Pied Piper won TechCrunch Disrupt, so everyone wants to invest. They're sort of jockeying between potentially all these other offers now that people see the pretty girl at prom and want to ask her to dance. Well, everyone wants to dance with us. So, yeah, it's just like real life. It's never easy, the ups and downs. I mean, people can be valued at hundreds of millions one day and worthless the next. It happens all the time. We met with venture capitalist firms, and if they had a company like Pied Piper that showed all this promise, they would literally have, like, Bono call them up to recruit them. They'd do anything. And this year, as they're growing, they have a need for a lot more money. And in order to get that money, you have to make a lot of deals with the devil. I just want to get funded and build Pied Piper. I hate this part. Season two is sort of the rise of Richard. It's not any kind of easy rise. In fact, maybe he doesn't even rise all that much. <laughs> Ehrlich is looking really now to be an icon. And an icon can eat shrimp during an interview, or as I call it, a shrimp interview. This one's a little bit of a curly cue. Look at that. <laughs> it's the same old, same old. We sort of hate each other, but underneath that hate, there's more hate. There's more hate. I think Jared is not used to being in sort of the winner's circle, so he's going to parties for the first time. I don't think he knows exactly how to react to being one of the cool kids. Someone's compression will save the world, and it sure as hell better be Nucleus, and not goddamn Pied Piper! This is a good season for Gavin Belson. He starts to unravel a little bit. He's angrier than ever, and he's got an axe to grind. Gavin Belson is quite intensely screwing me. No one thinks they're the bad guy in their own movie. Everyone's the hero of their own movie. If anyone finds out that I came back here, I will get fired. Monica is really showing more of her heart. She wants them to succeed, and I think that's a really beautiful thing. Ah, what are you There's doing? A, just... Monica might see Richard's penis this season. I didn't see anything. I was gonna say, if he had, he'd have to show me yours, too. <laughs> but not in the way you would think. <laughs> no spoiler alerts, but this is my 17th shrimp. One of the really unfortunate things about last year is that we lost Christopher Evan Welch, who played Peter Gregory. He was just an amazing, amazing actor and a great guy. So we had to figure out a different way of plotting the season, and there was certainly no way that Peter Gregory was going to be at the center of a lot of the stories. It becomes logical that if their benefactor dies, do they need to look for new sources of funding? In some ways, it helped us find a framework, sort of uh, Chris's parting gift to us. In the ideal world, you're making choices just based on what's the funniest story and what's making us laugh the most. And when you lose that guy like Chris, obviously he would have been a big part of season two. And sadly for, for us and for everybody, he's not. This is Lori Bream, the new managing partner at Raviga. Okay, so we did that. Lori Bream is the woman who takes over the helm of Raviga after Peter Gregory's death. To me, she's one of these people, you'll ask a simple question. Oh, I heard you used to be a math teacher. And it's like, uh, uh, yes, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I was a math teacher. I, I, I taught math. Well, you can sit I, down if you want to. Do you want to? Oh. Or should we stand? Uh, I'm standing. OK. But you don't have to. I think that kind of brain power makes you look at human interactions in a non-emotional way. Russ Hanneman, true pleasure to meet you. He sort of represents what a lot of people who have pride in Silicon Valley despise. He's obsessed with being a billionaire, and he's a member of the Three Comma Club. That's how many commas are in a billion dollars. Have you ever had beef? Like with someone, like, fighting? No, the food. Oh, yeah. No, you haven't. Get in. Carla is a new coder that comes in, kind of based on some female coders. And we had them on speed dial. And so as we were writing dialogue and coming up with plot points, we'd go back and forth trading ideas. She is pretty much one of the boys. The first phrase that came into my head was unwithable, which I, heard, I think I heard a rap artist use once. Jing Yang would love a female hacker, especially if she's a white girl. I think that's what he would be into. Uh, maybe they can eat some fish together. And I think it's going to change things a lot for the guys to have that female energy in the house. I've done this whole thing with my fly open. You can pan down. It's, that's been like that the whole time. Um, I'm going to give you a list of TV shows that this season is going to be funnier than. Lassie, Flipper, basically any show that was a drama about a childhood pet, we kicked the shit out of comedically. We got the Winklevoss twins, the guy that started Snapchat makes an appearance. I think there's a lot of good statements about technology. It's kind of fun to just really skewer the people that just think all tech is good for us. So if you thought last season was funny, strap in, strap it on, and watch it go in your brain.